not looking good, everybody. It's not looking good. Sorry. I'm Erica, and I'm distraught. I just left the bike repair shop. I had to ride my scooter to get here. My bike, my favorite bike, my newly renovated classic, the beautiful bike. It's broken. There's a chance it could be repaired, but there's also a chance. Ah! My bicycle has <laughs> eaten her last ride. It's not looking good, guys. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not very good today at showing contentment. <sighs> contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. But how can I be okay with my bike I may not have anymore? <sighs> the memories. Oh. Oh. I did the wrong hand. I'll sure miss that old girl. <laughs> you know, I don't think I'll ever be happy again. <laughs> Unless they're able to repair my bike. Or unless I can save up enough money to buy a new bike. But until then, I guess, I'm gonna have to be sad. <gasps> Cause my bike is broken. Cause it's, it's, it's broken. In today's story, we'll hear about some people who were stuck somewhere between where they used to be and where they wanted to go. If only they could have been okay with what they had in the present. Hey, I have a scooter. I can ride it to the store to go look at new bikes. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> store is the other way. <laughs> the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Exodus, chapters 16 and 17. The Israelites had lived as slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years. But God worked miraculous signs and parted the waters of the Red Sea to lead them to freedom. God's people were free, but it didn't take long for all that singing and celebrating to turn into whining. The Israelites complained to their leader, Moses. You must want all of us to die of hunger out here. Yeah, we had it good in Egypt. All the food we wanted. You do remember you were slaves, right? But we had so much meat we could barbecue every day. <sighs> the people continued to grumble, so Moses took their complaints to the Lord. The people don't trust you to give them food. I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Moses and Aaron called the people of Israel together to share God's words. Come to the Lord. He has heard you speak against him. As Aaron spoke, the glory of the Lord appeared as a cloud in the desert. Once again, God spoke to Moses. Tell the people, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Moses and Aaron told the people everything that God had said. In the evening, you will know that the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. He will give you meat to eat in the evening. He'll give you all the bread you want in the morning. Ha! Seeing is believing. Then you should probably look over there. Whoa. A large flock of quail, more birds than anyone had ever seen, settled upon the camp like a twittering, fluttering ocean. Quail barbecue for dinner! That evening, everybody in the camp ate their fill. And in the morning, heavy dew settled on the ground. And as it dried, it left something behind. What's this? Looks like snow. Like what? The stuff that falls on mountaintops. Flaky, white, tastes like honey. 
This is manna. It's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Gather only as much as you need for the day. What about tomorrow? Don't keep any of it until morning. God will give us what we need then. The Israelites gathered up the manna, sharing until each family had enough. Manna cakes, manna pudding, manna tostadas. Manna and quail pizza. Some people disobeyed God and tried to keep leftovers until the next day. Ew. But any manna kept overnight filled with maggots. Ugh. As long as the Israelites stayed in the desert, the Lord provided fresh manna for them to eat every single morning. Time to move camp. The Israelites soon moved to their next camp in Rephidim, and although manna was plentiful, fresh water was not. Seriously, I am so parched. Even though God had worked miracle upon miracle and provided food from nowhere, the Israelites still panicked. They turned on Moses once again. Give us water to drink right now. Why are you arguing with me? Don't you trust the Lord? Why did you lead us out of Egypt? At least we had water there. Now we're all going to die of thirst. The Israelites were so angry, they actually picked up stones to throw at Moses. Frustrated, Moses cried out to the Lord. Well, what am I going to do with these people? They're ready to kill me. Go out in front of the people. Take the walking stick you used when you struck the Nile River. I will stand there in front of you by the rock at Mount Horeb. Hit the rock, then water will come out of it. Thank you, Lord. Moses called the leaders and the people of Israel together. Come up with me to the rock at Mount Horeb. The huge rock overshadowed Moses as he walked beneath it. Walking stick held high. Now see what God will do. Moses struck the rock. Immediately, God caused cold, clear water to gush from the rock, forming a rushing stream below. <gasps> Not bad. Yeah, I guess it beats Egypt for now. Over and over, God showed that he would care for his people, but still the Israelites were tempted to long for what they had before, in spite of their newfound freedom. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt, but then God rescued them and brought them into freedom. You'd think they would be overjoyed, but instead they whined and complained about what they didn't have. Now, it's easy for us to look back at the Israelites and think, how could they act that way? Didn't they realize what God had done for them? But the truth is, we can sometimes whine and complain when we don't immediately get what we want. Sometimes we look backwards, like when we start a new school year. My teacher last year didn't give us much homework. Sometimes we look to the future, like when we're waiting for something exciting. I want Christmas to be here right now! We spend all this time looking backward and forward that we completely forget to look at what we have right now. For instance, right now, I may not have a bicycle, but I do have a scooter. What about you? Think about it. Don't think about what you don't have. Think of what you do have. It could be a favorite toy or a favorite thing to wear. It could be friends. Could be a place to sleep at night. Could be family. What do you have right now? I can tell you one thing you have no matter who you are. You have a God who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And that will always be true. Here's the one thing to remember today. Don't miss out on what you have right now. Right now, I have a good attitude. I've got strength and energy and I've got a scooter to ride around on. I'm so content. <laughs> I'll see ya. Ooh! Trading paint!
No, you no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. Hey, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. <laughs> yep. Welcome yeah, to the show. It's not a lot going on today. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just just Brandon and I doing our normal shtick. <laughs> hey, but just to be. Just to be sure, let's check out the cue board. Oh, yes! The yes, cue board! Yes, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah! Oh, uh, it's just our normal shtick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you remember back when we used to do fun things on the show? Oh, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You mean like when we, our friend Leonard would come by and we'd stick our faces, <laughs> our faces in, in the mud! mud. In All the right, mud! Yeah. Go! <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. Yeah. No, but I, I meant even further back, like when everything was new and different. Oh, like you mean back when we first met? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man, things sure were better. They were back then. Ooh, dream sequence. Oh. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. John, we should do something different and new today. Well, how can we? For all of my best ideas to work, we have to be old enough to drive a car. Or we have to be taller. Or we have to have more life experience, you know. Yeah, I wish we were older. The show would be way better that way. Yeah. You know something? Maybe we could spice things up and invite a guest on the show. Well, who would want to be on a show in my basement? I found this kid on the way over, and he wants to. He's just outside. Really? What's his name? I don't remember. Okay, what does he want to talk about? I don't know. Stuff. He knows stuff. Okay, please welcome someone who knows stuff. ba da da, -da. Um, so, tell us what you know and who you are. My name is Leonard Fortescue, but my mom calls me Leo. Great. It's nice to meet you, Leo. What do you know? Do you play any sports or anything? No, not really. Unless you consider running away from Mr. Mooneyham's dog a sport. That dog hates me. Uh, so what, what's that you have with you? Oh, this? It's a metal detector. I just got it for my birthday. What's it do? It detects metal. How about that? Haven't found any treasure yet, but I did find old Uncle Hubert's false teeth. Well, I guess that's good. No, not really. If you consider that he was still wearing them. Okay. Thanks for coming on the show today, Leo. No problemo. Ask me back any time. Come on, metal detector. You ought to have a better name than that. Hmm. Camilla. Yeah. Come on, Camilla. Well... That was something new. And it was definitely different. <laughs> yeah. I wish we were older. Yeah. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. Yeah. Bible story time with Kellen. What's going on? Hey, Callan. Hey, Callan. Not, Not much. much. Wow. Why are you guys so down in the dumps? 
Yeah, you know, just kind of bored. Yeah, same old, same old. What are you talking about? What you guys do is so fun and exciting. Doesn't, Doesn't seem, seem that, that way. way. You know, I got a story about some people who were complaining about where they were and wished they were someplace else. And I think you need to hear it. Sounds good. Fine. <laughs> of course, I'll need the so-and-so show players to help me out. Perfect. Take it away, Kellen. <laughs> now, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. But God, through Moses, led them out of slavery into freedom. We're free! <laughs> we're masters of our own house! That's right! No more cooking and cleaning no more! We're free! Free! <laughs> Why? You're not going to cook and clean no more? No. We're free! <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> They may have been free from slavery in Egypt, but it didn't take long for the Israelites to be chained up by something else, discontent. We have to get out of this desert. I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm starting to think Egypt wasn't so bad. We may have been enslaved, but at least we had food. That's right. We might not have been able to go where we wanted to go or say what we wanted to say. Wear what we wanted to wear. We're 100% owned by somebody and forced to build big old buildings. But, but at, at least we, we had, had food. food. The people complained to the man who had led them to freedom, Moses. And Moses took their complaints to God. God. I'm sure you know this, but everybody's hungry. They're afraid they're going to starve here in the desert. Tell them I will rain down bread from heaven, but only gather as much as you need. Really? You're going to make it rain bread? That's, that's pretty cool. I will send them bread in the mornings, though when the sun goes down, I will send meat. What? You're going to send bread and meat? <laughs> That's crazy. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Yeah. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> so Moses told the people everything God said. So at night he's going to send meat, and in the mornings he'll send bread. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that when I see it. <laughs> yeah, like meat. It's just gonna fall out of the sky. <laughs> I'm not really a poultry fan. A great flock of quail landed where they had camped, and every Israelite ate their fill. Then the next morning, there was a heavy dew, but when the dew dried, it left. What's what? That on the ground there. What is that? <laughs> no idea. That's called manna. It's the bread I told you God would send. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> it can't send any multigrain down, can it? To be clear, the bread, called manna, did not look like full loaves of sliced bread. But still, God sent them fresh manna every single morning. And yet, though God continued to provide for them, the Israelites still complained to Moses, this time about not having enough water to drink. <laughs> I, I, oh, oh, I hate to bother you again, but these people are going to kill me if they don't get some water. Take the people to Mount Horeb and hit the giant rock there with your staff. Water will come out of it. What? You're going to make water come out of a rock? <laughs> I can't wait to see this. <laughs> so Moses took all the people and gathered them at Mount Horeb by the huge rock. What? You're going to make water come out of that rock? <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Hallelujah.
<laughs> you can't make another flavour, can you? Yeah, this one has too much of a water flavour. <laughs> Enjoy. What? It's a little chalky. You don't have any of that glacier stuff, do you? That stuff is so tasty. They had it in Egypt. The end. Let's give it up for the so-and-so show players. <laughs> God continued to show his people he would look after them and provide for them, even though they continued to doubt him and long for the past. That, that's crazy they, they, that they would look back to how things were in the past instead of enjoying how awesome things are right now. Uh, uh. Haven't we been doing that? Touche. Mm. Mm. It's true. Sometimes it's hard to be content with what's happening in the present. We're either looking backwards to the way things used to be, or we're looking forward to the way we wish things would be. When we do that, we miss out on what God is doing for us in the here and now. Hmm. Oh, and I think the here and now is, is, is pretty great, actually. Thank you, Kellen. You betcha. Yeah, see you around, Kellen. You know, you and I do get to do some awesome things. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes we focus on what's not going right instead of everything that is. Well, then let's focus on the good stuff right now. Yeah! And you can join us. Okay, reveal the question. Uh, what is good in your life yeah. right now? Uh, I, I would say my friendships are going pretty well right now. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I was going to say the same thing. Oh, no I, kidding. Also, I'm pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Um, I know God loves me no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and my banjo lessons are going well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you the other day. It actually sounds like a banjo now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What's good in your life right now? Yeah. You know, I'm glad we're older, John. Yeah, me too. We can drive. Yeah, and we're taller. And I can leave my dirty socks on the floor anytime I want. Yeah. <laughs> right now is good. Agreed. Hey, thanks for watching the so-and-so show, everybody. We'll keep getting older. Bye. <laughs> Come on, Camille. Let's find us some priceless treasure. I do believe this is the first bowling ball ever made. It was actually made out of a giant jawbreaker. <sighs> yep, it would have been a terrible piece of candy. A key? I bet this is the key to the old Reese house. Opens up all the long lost peanut butter cups. Hey, it's a silver dollar. You know, I think those two brothers who live over on Almond Street collect these. 